without further ado, let me briefly introduce our two guests. So our first guest is Darshan Nerli, who is a co-organizer for Game Audio Malaysia. Similar, a game developer focus group based in Malaysia. They've also had been keeping online due to the recent pandemic. Um, he was a game designer turned sound designer and has generally... My main brain fight. Darshan, do you mind finishing your introductions on your own? Sure, uh, I can do that. So I started off um, in game dev. I picked game tech at first, realized I couldn't do that went into game art because uh, that was kind of like my a hobby of mine, realized that there was a difference between passion and career, uh, finally settled and I then settled with game design, which is what I wanted to take originally, and moved into project management. And while doing project management, I got to also uh, dabble in sound design. And that is finally what, I, what I'm settling for at the moment. Yes, and then you've also worked on for, uh several projects such as Fires at Midnight, Read Legends, and Gigabash, is that correct? Yes, uh, and for those three games, uh, my main focus was in project management and uh, sound design was also uh, included there as well. And then for our second panelist, it's Elmer Ho, who was responsible for sound and music for Ageless, The Company Man, Read Legends. Uh, he has also worked on Street Fighter Five for those who are interested in it. And anything else you'd like to add, Elmer? No, no. Once again, thanks for inviting me, Matt Johnson. So, like, you know, just a little bit myself. So I do a lot of music on audio for games and film. So I'm basically I started out with film, and eventually I moved to Tokyo, where I was a content digital content producer there. Got into a few gigs locally, started working in the game industry, uh, came back to Malaysia. Um, worked with a company in Boston and and in Malaysia as well. Later on, founded a founded my own audio solutions company back here at home. Now, um, my ma my official job is audio director slash composer slash um, audio designer. Yeah, thank you very much. And so, you know, with introduction set out of the way, why don't we first start? When is the best time? in the design cycle to have a conversation about music and sound effects. You know, not too early before the mechanics and core game loops is fleshed out, but also not too late when the only thing left to do is polish. You know, for a lot of people, they struggle to figure out what the best time is. So for the two of you, when do you think is the best time to start considering audio? Mm, that's a great question, Johnson. Uh, let's see. I, I can speak for myself when I say like, you know, Unlike linear media, interactive media, it's really, really best to get um, your musicians and sound designers in as soon as possible, you know. And I would dare to say, like, you know, it's even important to get them in right at the start so that they can come and plan plan the stuff with you, um, plan their DG GDD with you, so that in instead of having, like, you know, music come in as a miscellaneous thing, your music and your sound can actually be part of the experience, you know, as a whole picture rather than just like a supporting role. Yes, uh, and I'd like to chime in as well. Uh, that is something I agree in, uh, agree with Elmer on. Though I will also say that it doesn't mean that it's uh, impossible to like add it um, later on into the development itself because sometimes you do have cases where you finish, you fresh out your game and like, Music is like put at the very end of it, and like you need to find someone to like make put the sound you know, and put the sound effects inside as well. Um, however, the disadvantage of that is that your sound effects and I think and music as well would fe end up feeling more of like a functional as asset instead of something that can blend better into the game, like as compared to having it done early into development. Uh, and not not to say that like the developers can't try their best but pu pushing everything towards the end of development also will also mean that you're also chipping away a lot of time uh, and otherwise more development time that could have been also spent uh, for the audio like when we when we talk about time and all that like you know from for my end like darshan let me just add to that 
would definitely be, you know, when we talk about audio, we have to first think about what does the audio purpose serve in the game, right? So when we look at when we look at situations like that, we will have to think like, you know, music in the game is supposed to enhance the experience, enhance the emotions, right? And then the sound effects will be generally be used to, you know, uh, the, you know, signal impacts. Like for example, if you have a knife chopping into somebody, you don't want a duck sound, right? You want a knife chopping into somebody. So like, and sometimes like, you know, when you have your music composers come in early in the stage, what you could do is you can plan with your, um, with your uh, director actually. And uh, let me just share one of my experience. Um, shout out to um, Bala from Ageless, um, where we had this like, seven seven layer boss so every layer of the boss we actually had um had we actually you know wanted to plan some music around it so he, we were like sitting down and okay we were wondering what do we do with it so what uh, what Bala did was he was telling he was like okay let's discuss music we want it in this ambience we want it in this atmosphere okay and then every time and then we end up with a discussion and then we ended up with every time you enter a different phase of the boss the music changes so then we had to talk about implementation we had to talk about the programming of things we had to talk also a little bit more a little bit about you know how does the music transition do we want to fade do we want to when it goes back to the lobby return to phase a and the, and the earlier you get your composer in or sound designer in, the earlier we can plan stuff like these out. And when we plan stuff like these out, you know, we can actually make the music and the audio a little bit more interactive rather than, you know, later on we have to rush things out and we don't get to plan these awesome stuff actually. So I think that would be like a really huge advantage, in my opinion. Right. And as you noted early on, it's game audio is not a single process. It's not a filter that you put stuff in and music comes out and it works for your game very much like any other part of game development it's a lot more flexible it goes for weaves and flows you know you will have a draft and it starts to move it's it becomes a part of development as it should be and just to touch on your earlier point about the several layers for that seven stage boss you know when it comes to good examples of you know game audio on perhaps specifically games you worked on. Can you think of any recent examples of where it was a good example of not only you working well with a team, but perhaps, you know, in game audio itself as an art that you made a song or you had a sound effect that really matched the game? Well, that's, well, when, uh, let me just uh, clarify that question a little bit. When you say, Johnson, when you said like, you know, when match the game, right? Do you mean something that like um, it's specifically crafted to a certain scene, or do you mean um, like um, it... if I don't mind um, something you're proud of to put it in a very succinct way? Oh man, like this is such a this is such an artistic question, man. <laughs> <laughs> Why you gotta do this to me? <laughs> but, but like nah, <laughs> like um, I, I'm gonna say I can speak for myself, and maybe Darshan, you have some really good ones as well. Yeah, but I would say. In my in my opinion, like anything that I'd be proud of is something that, at the end of the day, we you know it fits the scene. You know what I mean? So, as a composer, we have to craft something that um, will definitely fit the mood. And I wouldn't say like you know my babies that I'm proud of one over the other. I would say like you know hey, if it comes out and it puts a smile on the listener's face, I've done my job. As for me, uh, I do have like a few examples I can think of. Um, and this can also uh, add on to the previous point about why it is important to have like audio be considered earlier on in the development cycle as well. I did share a link in the presentation resources about, so that's the audio for um, Bastion from, uh, and that's like a game I really adore and like that company I really look up to. So there's this like, there's a game that, uh, that I worked on and they, the feature of that game are like creature noises. And so it's not just creature noises, but it's also like um, creature attacks, like footsteps and stuff like that. So when the team, when my team was developing the, the, the sound effects for them, we did all the attacks or like the specialized sounds, like the like claw swipe sound, like a So we were replaying that like every like now and then it's like, it felt the sounds itself is good, but then we felt like there was something missing and we couldn't like quite pinpoint it. But then we just uh, decided to try something. Decided to add a voice into the character as well. So now instead of just 
it being like a claw swipe, it becomes more like a <laughs> So that voice adds on to the emotion, to the weight. It adds on to the character of that creature as well. And having that time to experiment and to test out different variations of those kind of sounds as well helps to spot these additional things we can add inside and like things that we can use to improve the sounds as well. So that's one instance that uh, I was quite proud of um, adding in Settler. So the other instance is also uh, a different game where their highlight is more towards like horror elements. And there were like three different ghosts inside of it. And these are also like different voices that I got to try out as well. Uh, so that one in particular I was proud of because like I could see the, the creature designs and try to like tear and try to like uh, envision what kind of sounds that they would have. Like a more skeleton looking one can sound a bit more like <laughs> something like that. Or like maybe a lot more like brutish kind of um, ghost can like sound a bit more like gorilla. You can like layer gorilla noises underneath there too and so on and so forth. Well, I imagine from you were mentioning earlier about how, you know, audio is not just a one and done role. Like there's very much a interaction between a relationship between the game development team and the game, you know, sound designer, music composer, whether it's oh, yeah, down for sure. to, mm-hmm. Yeah. Mm-hmm. And it's very much a having to get feedback and having to test sounds to make sure mm-hmm. it fits the action. So to go back to that earlier question about when to start considering audio is like, as early as you can, it almost seems like, because just as games are doing testing, you know, whether it's for bugs or art or sound or anything else, mm-hmm. it's also a good chance for the game to be testing sound and how that, Right. Elmer was saying, the sound should enhance the game. And it's hard to, to get that. It's hard to know how to do that if you don't have that time for, you know, for that sound mm-hmm. to be a part of the game. Mm-hmm. I'd like to add on to that, Johnson, and like, basically, you're right, it, I mean, like, you know, we, some, a, a lot of misconceptions about, like, the industry today is, like, music needs to come at the end as a part of post-production, and audio has to come as post-production, because that's the common practice for linear media, or, like, for film and all that, you know, once you have a locked picture, then you mm-hmm. get the musicians and audio people to come in when you have a jingle, you have, then once you have a lock picture, you get the audio people to come in, however, for games, it's a little bit different, and the reason why we want to say like you know audio should come in just as early as everyone else is because you know it is part of the whole picture like for example you wouldn't put your illustrator at the end right that wouldn't make sense because they're they're part of the design as well and i would say audio design is also part of the core of the game which and there is only one instance where the music comes ahead of everyone else is if you are developing a rhythm game where you actually have to have the music first and then the programming and the art comes in to fit the context. Or sometimes, you know, in the rhythm game, like the art and the music comes together and then the programming department comes in. So it really is case by case basis on the type of game you're doing. Mm-hmm. If you have a lot of cinematics, for example, um, we would do work on the core game first and then once the cinematic is out, then we will score for the cinematic. I mean, this is like on a case by case basis. So yeah, I mean, I just like to share about that. No, yeah, it's absolutely um, good to know, definitely, the differences they are for different type of games. Um, so why don't we move on to the next question? Well, since Elmer brought it up earlier about misconceptions about, you know, general sound design and music composition, specifically the game audio side for games, you know, are there any other common misconceptions that you feel like it would be a good time now to mention to general people? Mm, well... Shall we go down the rabbit hole, Darshan? Yeah, I'm trying to think of which hole to start with. Mm, like one of them is uh, something I've experienced while working with um, larger entities, no names, because I do respect them and they are great <laughs> people. Um, and they are they create amazing stuff. Is one one really common misconception is music is something that you can skim out on and like you know you can get you can you can put one side like like i'll give you an example of this like some people would just like you know put everything in budget for everything else and they skip out on audio right and because audio is something that you can't see 
And what happens is you can feel audio because audio adds to the experience. Just try, just try this for a moment. You know, take any of your favorite movie, turn off all the audio, try watching it, and see if you have the same experience. You know, it's just not the same. And some people ex uh, expect, of course, like you know, audio can be done with a span of two weeks, and like you know, like let's say if we're gonna do like fifty tracks in two weeks, it's not gonna happen, right? So. Audio is not something that, like, you know, it's be just because, you know, you can't see it doesn't mean it's not important and doesn't mean it's not there. It still takes, like, a team of people at to, like, you know, create that amazing, what we call soundscape. Just think of landscape, but, like, you know, instead filled with sound, like, you know, like a forest, and then you have, like, some, like, uh, elven music behind it that paints a huge soundscape, or you have a forest and you have some horror music and it, it makes a haunted forest. You know, that kind of small, intricate design is something that takes a lot of time. And it does feed into the experience of the user. I think we call that a user experience kind of thing, where those things cannot be seen tangibly, but it can be felt. Adding on to Elmer's points, uh, I, I did think of something that is uh, really important also about how audio in game dev is not is definitely not the same uh, as you know with audio in linear media. And what I mean by that is when you implement the sounds into the game as well. For linear media, uh, from, from what I see most of the time, is that you get the picture and you try to like sync the audio and like uh, do like a voiceover or so, like Foley like, and you match the, the things you see on the screen. For audio in games, you also need to consider uh, mostly the user experience in the audio. The, the, the sound effects cannot just be functional people will realize that something is missing. Uh, simple examples would be like perhaps like wind up, wind up noises because in the game, it's important for players to know and to, to understand where the audio is coming from, uh, depending on the, the, the genre as well, of course. But even like with like UI noises, like transitional, like transitional noises, all these little, little details can help enhance the experience of the game itself and it helps give information to the players and these are things that can easily be overlooked if you don't have someone who is uh, well versed in game audio like not not just audio as a field also but like game audio specifically because if a person understands how to develop games or at least like can understand like what the like how the mechanics work or has like a certain relationship with like the animators and like the programmers you'll be able to work closer with them and they'll be able to like communicate like what is it that they want to have in the games as well and it's supposed to be all like connected together like you, the audio person cannot just like work um, by themselves as as is the same with the multiple departments in games right and it's very much well this seems to slightly touch on your you know project management experience as well like you mentioned the discipline of game audio is not an independent thing separate from the rest of game development you know it's just as having programming knowledge as an artist or having some artistic knowledge as a programmer can really help benefit the whole team yes and, yeah and it's good to understand that game audio is no different and it's certainly part of that interdisciplinary thinking that is sort of encouraged or should be encouraged specifically in game development teams now like in, in terms of like scheduling, you know, it's also a process of scheduling and management and how that outcome can really, can really affect the game or the output or the movie or the game and so on. So to move on a bit, I do want to ask, you know, in either of your opinions, what is a good example of great sound or how would you define good sound in a game? Wow, I, I like this. I, I really like this question, man. This this question is such like you can answer it both in a technical point of view and you can answer it from a more holistic point of view as well. So like, give give me an can I, can I just like you know get a second to like you know prepare this answer like Darshan, you want to go first on this one? Yeah, I can. Okay, I'll start with the sound direction because what makes good sound can can be subjective but it can also be depending on what the what is the direction you're um heading towards and an example i like to use a lot is um sound effects for let's say like a show like jojo's bizarre adventure 
And if if you watch the show, it's the sound effects for that is like really like loud, bombastic, over exaggerated. Like punches are um, replaced with like gunshot noises. Uh, certain um, abilities are literally just a bass boost stretched out. But it sounds good and it works in context of the show. If you take the same kind of sound direction and put it into like a different kind of show, it wouldn't make as much sense and like it, it would just sound it would just feel odd and similarly this can also be translated into into games as well if you have a 3d game uh 3d photorealistic kind of like graphics of course you will want sound that sounds that um match the setting as well texture noises like foley noises and if you have like a maybe more uh, cartoonish kind of game or more like um stylized game then maybe you would want more synthetic noises um more cutesy kind of noises so that sounds like, like i love the technical answer actually so i i actually have this one statement where i learned like um when i was like you know having my music journey um there's this really great quote that stuck to me to this day and it really affected how i do my music and how i do my audio as well so great audio great music in any production regardless of whether it's linear or interactive it's not something that you notice immediately you feel it very well. So if you you know you have done a great job as a music composer or sound designer is if your audience doesn't notice it immediately, but feels the impact and upon repetition, they will notice it. So like, for example, um, you play a, a game like, let's say, for example, Genshin, right? When you enter the world, you immediately get absorbed into the soundscape. You get overwhelmed. So like great art, great music, great audio, great everything. Once you put everything together, you just have that, you know, like really awesome experience that you've been sucked into that world. Mm -hmm. And then after you play for a while, you will start to notice the small little elements, you know, with the grass details, with like the character designs, and then the beautiful music that goes behind it, every single sound effect that happens whenever you take every single step, the world that you're in. And that to me, I think is what defines great audio. And if you are a creator, um, if you are a sound designer, you are a composer, like, if you can create something like that, you know you've done your job. Yeah, very well put the two of you. And just to try and summarize the two parts together, as you mentioned, it's something that feels good naturally. And it's something that, as you've been saying this whole evening so far, enhances the game, as especially if you play through it. And, you know, and Darshan's answer about the game and having it fit the sounds and you know at times the sound doesn't have to be in front you know just as a game is a mixture of design programming art and everything else the same can be said with sound sometimes the moment doesn't need the music or the sound to be punching you in the face something to take like johnson like you, you mentioned empty stuff so I, I got a really interesting one like artists would be very familiar with this concept um it's called negative space like this is a, what it means in the art context. Like for example, you paint everything except the apple in the middle, which you leave blank. And people can imagine that apple being there. So sometimes when we do music crafting or audio crafting, we intentionally leave silence. And I cannot stress this enough to like, you know, young creators uh, or like, you know, people, you don't have to fill your whole thing with sound. You don't have to fill it. There are some times where silence works better. Like for example, after you've after you went through a whole level and then you're walking down a corridor okay and you just have footsteps going ta, 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 and it's like quite reverby and you're going down the ha the hallway there's no music suddenly like all the battle music is gone all everything is gone it gives you a sense of anticipation that something is going to happen at the end of the tunnel you know what i mean and then after that when you enter the boss room or you enter a different scene the emotions are multiplied vastly because of um, lack of audio audio response. Suddenly, you know, all the, whatever that comes in after that will just overwhelm you, and that's how we use negative space sometimes. Mm -hmm. Yeah, that definitely makes sense. And it, you know, again, goes back to the point of this is a process. This is not something you can, I imagine, as sound designers and music composers, not just something you can just put in the game and say, okay, am I correct? Like this is something you go back and forth with with the game developers. Yeah. Uh, so th there is another link that I uh, shared into the presentation resources, like the in Invisible Sound Design of uh, Breath of the Wild. 
it, it's a nice show. It's a nice demonstration of how audio can be utilized and like um and and it can enhance the experience of the game as well uh, in a more like technical side as well. So uh, yeah, if you have time, like do do give it a watch. Oh man, I love that link, man. I'll have to watch it later. Now to turn a bit to move away specifically from you know. Uh, music composition, sound effect making, and design. I do want to touch more on uh, Darshan, your experience as project management, and I'm very curious about what is the process like, especially when you're project managing an audio team. Well, for to start things off, uh, there's a whole lot of messaging uh, <laughs> with with all like the different people as well. So I'll, I'll I think I'll start like from like let's say like the beginning of the the development cycle. So. So it starts off with like meetings, brainstorming, trying to get an idea of what is it, what kind of audio the game needs. So uh, added added context, uh, I did work in a uh, outsourcing company. So I will have a connection with the client. So we we'll have a discussion, and then it's kind of like my responsibility to translate that to uh, my team as well because. They can say that they want this sound, but then the audio team can also have their own idea of what that sound is like, and so that's where my documents can come in handy. You know, do come in handy, and also like the that game sense also. So asset sheets, checklist, documentation, all there, and this is the same for feedback as well. So I'll I'll be handling the like submissions giving it to the clients, making sure that the submissions are also, like the assets given are also like um, written down in, in detail on like what is this meant to serve, uh, how is it used, so that the clients also know uh, what, what, is the, what is it that we're giving them. And then they'll also they'll ask for feed, their feedback and then, it's, and then it's our turn to fix it again. So the fixing process can, you know, should also serve to help the the clients as well because sometimes when you do like nail down like that sound uh or most most cases like when you do nail that the sound like the sound effects then like, there'll be no problem but then like you do you will have cases where like some sounds like maybe are like or like some assets so it's just like it's not working so well so what, what do you do then it's advisable to like send in like multiple variations because like you like the client can say like uh, oh, I want this sound to sound uh, bigger. So what does bigger mean? Does bigger mean um, heavier or like bassier or like um, more like more repetition? Uh, part of my job is also to clarify with them, but also uh, then it's my it's also like my responsibility to um, give like suggestions on like how um, you can give multiple variations of like um, this keyword. So it's it's a little bit extra work, but at least when you send in those uh, when when we send in the files. The client can also see like the different variations, and then like even if all of them are not right, they can point towards what is the direction that they are actually looking for. So yeah, it also like helps like um shorten down that uh trial and error kind of um process also lah. Yeah, that's that's a big part of what I handle. Oh sorry, yeah, another addition is also yeah to to manage like the timelines, uh, making sure that uh, people like getting done done on time, and if that doesn't work out, uh how do you um compromise with with the clients as well and so on and so forth. Right, it very much sounds like a producer's role in that mm -hmm. you are not just managing the audio, but also managing the people involved, you know, not just the audio team and those making it, but also of the dev team. And, you know, the first thing you mentioned was very poignant about documentation and writing down specifically, like almost like a budget of how, mm -hmm. what the game developers or what your clients are expecting, and you're trying to uh, quantify it. How many sound effects does that mean? How much music does this mean? Instead of being like a vague idea in the developer's mind and having mm. to communicate that with that audio team. The second point you made, I think it's quite interesting. This is how, you know, you point to having variations, specifically when a client or the team, the development team has feedback on a song or a sound effect, but maybe aren't quite clear on how they want to improve it. It's very interesting because I've always thought of it as like you edit a single file back and forth, but you were saying as a sound, you know, when you are managing that audio team, it could be beneficial to provide feedback to the 
uh, sound designer or music composers to be like, why not provide a variety and you let the client choose, oh, more mm-hmm. like this, but less like this. So that's a very interesting point you just made. Like, you know, I don't really don't have anything to add, but just I just want to say one thing. You know, like, I really appreciate all of the project managers out there, you know, mad respect to them because they have to deal with our shit. Because, <laughs> like, you got to understand, like, for those of you guys who are, like, you know, fresh to the audio scene, or some of you might have known, like, you know, the, the system of, like, you know, how it goes is, like, you know, producer, audio director, and project manager on top. And then after that, like, after we get the directions and how everything to go, you know, the project manager has to handle it, handle the music department, which composes of like composers, arrangers, talents, artists, everything, mix engineers. And that's just for the music side of things, you know. Then we have the technical for the sound side of people like, you know, Foley artists, uh, sound designers, VA, everything. Like, you know, there are so many things involved all the way down to game audio implementer, mix engineer, mastering engineer. And like, you know, I wouldn't know what I would do without somebody to manage this, you know. But at the end of at the end of the day, also, it's like I just want the work to be good, and also trying our best not to have everyone uh, like end up putting their hair on on the job or so lah. Of course, of course. And then we do have a question from Juan about you know sound design as a career. How should one start? I'll let the two of you answer, and especially if it happens to mix with a story about how you yourself started. So I guess I can share my journey Um, because I did share that I came from different um, streams and audio was something that I've always had an interest in or I've always enjoyed consuming it. But then in one of my, uh, in my final year project, in one of my school projects, uh, I realized that the game was missing some sounds. And I was like, oh, okay, what, what do I do about this? I, I stole music to, from another game to use to, to showcase. But the sound effects was a little bit harder to find because we needed to get, like, to match, like, our animations. So what I did is I opened up um, Audacity, uh, which is I, I, almost like every um, sound designer's first um, audio software tool. And what I did is I took uh, sounds from uh, Dota and just, like, layered it with, like, some, like, some of his other sounds also to match the, the animation. That was my first dabble in sound design. And when I got my first job as, as a project manager, they, it was in an audio post-production house. And from there, I got to learn and expand on the skill. And I did take a bit of time, uh, a bit of extra time working hours for myself to learn that skill. And I did enjoy it. And to start, I'd say, like, it's an easy thing to say, like, uh, like how, how do you start? Uh, you just um, get started, you start doing things, but that's, that's the easy answer. How I would expand on that is you can perhaps try to study the sound effects itself. What I mean by that is a, a good resource is actually um, like Dota, uh, Dota 2 or Do- the Dota Wiki page, because they have a section where they actually uh, extract the sound effects for the characters and uh, they actually like separate it all for you to, to view and you can even download them uh, by yeah so you take a sound like let's say um like a an earth or like a rock based creature then you see you try to see the sound like or you try to listen to it like what kind of sounds how many how many sounds how many layers of sounds are playing at the same time or like um and how would you um arrange those sounds as well and the footsteps so Sound, I like to compare it a bit with art, where like you, like in Photoshop, like you have layers, right? Sound is also kind of similar, where you put like layers of sound, like one on top of the other. Then after after that, you go into like the more technical side of things. You go into like um, plugins. You go to like, you check out like equalizers. You check out um, reverbs. So equalizers is to like to mess around with the frequencies to the sound. So let's say for example, if you uh, recording somebody's voice, you have like background noise, you have white noise. So what you can do is like you can get rid of that frequency. Reverb is just making things like sound more echoey to like match maybe like the the environment that you're in. The more you look into how to design a sound, and there's there's definitely like a, a ton of um, resources like online, also like tutorials, uh, how to create certain sound. And like the more you look into it, the more you start understanding and look the deeper of an appreciation you'll have in the craft as well. 
that was an amazing answer, Darshan. You covered a lot of that. And like before I started to cons like, you know, tell you guys about like what the advice would be, because like, you know, the advice would probably just be like a one sentence answer, but hear me out. So I actually started out like, you know, just majoring in music in college, actually, university, and uh, I did major in composition. So actually, I didn't start out with game audio. I started out with film, actually. I started working on like, you know, Foley, I started working on sound design and music because I was a music major. And eventually, you know, I s started to chase my passion in anime, actually. And that's how like, you know, eventually I found my way into the game industry because like, you know, it became like a really fun thing to do, especially when you're in Japan and when you are working with a bunch of like passionate people, you know, you just, you just want to get dragged into the workflow. Um, for myself, uh, you know, I guess the biggest advice I could give anybody and this is a pretty common question, like, you know, be it whether at TEDx or like, um, like some of the university talks I've given, how do you start? My question in return would be, where does the circle start? You know, you can start by learning how to use a DAW, a digital audio workstation, like, you know, uh, Cakewalk is free, Reaper Trial is free, you know, you can get them online and you can start by creating or you can start by, you know, learning musical techniques or you can start by, you know, getting like a microphone, you can start by doing a lot of stuff like you know but the ultimate question is um what do you want to do first so like you know if you want to do music first you know um, what i would suggest is you take like you know uh, some virtual instruments where you can find you know maybe um, there are some trial virtual instruments that you can use there are some virtual instruments that like you know you can just like download online and use it it's called vsts um, you might want to know that down and you know just try and create music and you try or for sound design um like Dar what darshan just mentioned you know take existing sound and try to replicate them and by doing that you know you will start to like you know put your first step in there i think the ultimate answer for that question would be for you to start somewhere you have to figure out where you want to start because like you know it doesn't matter where you start as long as you start yeah uh a uh, short chime in also like even the equipment also that you have also like uh, honestly speaking, the phone that you have in your hand is a great start already. I, I can I can attest to that. Yeah, you know, like we I was working like on a jingle TV TV jingle, and I know this has nothing much to do with games, but like hear me out. Like we had to record the vocals and we had to record it fast. So we were everyone was out at that point and nobody had any studio equipment. So like you know this girl she just grabbed an iPhone and started recording the jingle, oh, and. Nice. At the end of the day, we just mix it down and then we send it to the client. The client was like, this is the best. And then now it's on TV. <laughs> nice. <laughs> no joke, man. You know, if I may ask, uh, this might be a personal question, but as Elmer mentioned, you went to study music and Darshan yourself, uh, was it game development? Yes, game development. I did have, oh sorry, uh, I did have a music theory um, um, on the side. Like, uh, I did play the piano as well. And, and it does help. Not to go on too long, but like educationally, like how, how much do you think that benefited you in terms of your game audio skills, especially when you started working on games? Mm, on my end, you see, uh, because like, you know, it depends on the job that you do, but I would say like some of the best composers that I've seen out there, like, I just want to make it out there, like some of the best audio people I've seen out there have like, they never studied music at all. They picked it up along the way. And for me, of course, like, you know, I would say having a tertiary education or like, you know, at least some basics in what you do doesn't dictate where you'll be in the future. As for me, uh, so the question was, um, how did the education from my uh, uni helped with my journey into audio, is it? Right, because you specifically have a game development program. I, I'm just very curious, how has that been? How do you view that in hindsight now? I would say it's good also that I had really helpful um lectures like from kdu uh now now you owe uow yeah so understanding game development or like the process behind game dev uh they they didn't have like a course for um game uh, for uh game audio itself but i think you know by now having learned all the different streams so and having gone through the whole game dev um cycle to understand what goes into the process of making a game and also like understand like a little bit of like each field and each stream also it does help in the process of making 
or like implementing audio into the game because uh, like i like i did mention like earlier like game making making sounds for games is a whole lot different it is different from making sounds for like film because you need to implement the sound the sounds are being triggered uh differently uh and repetitively too so that is a lot of these like small things we do need to consider and may, maybe a good practice is to play play a game and see and try to observe like how the game manages uh, or implements the sound or so and compare it like from like different games that you play also maybe a game like if higher budget compared to like a game with like a lower budget i think a good game i'd use it as an example would be uh the last of us 2 or even if you just like watch um playthroughs or so like the environment sounds the footstep sounds there was even like i think a video about like how they implement like different like reading um cycles and all of that knowledge does help going through learning about game dev itself. Right. Uh, also, like, I just like to add to that, Darshan. This line of work, you know, it's a multidiscipline kind of work, if you get what I mean. Mm -hmm. I, the reason why I say multidiscipline is, you know, we'll just take music and audio as one discipline, right? And I'm, I'm sure, like, Johnson, you know this as well, because, like, um, you know, you have your music and let's say and then in order for you to create multi-layer stuff and work efficiently with your programmer you need to know a little bit of programming like unity and unreal as well and for and for those who do marketing you kind of need to know like you know how the game process is made before you talk to the clients right so like i would say the more skills you have the more beneficial just like in any other industry just to like wrap it all up just as you mentioned it's it's very much not its own it's not a independent thing separate from the rest of game development the more varied experience and the more varied knowledge you have can definitely add to that and as with any art you know you have to start somewhere taking reference you know it's no problem in just trying to mimic what sounds good already to you because they've done the effort they put it in you can learn from it mm -hmm. yes so now why don't we move on to our final question which is maybe pushing a bit for out of uh, your guys territory but for you know aspiring game developers specific specifically small developers who may not have the budget to afford you know sound designers or music composers to work on their game what's a tip you can give these people whether they are trying to make their own sounds or trying to you know find songs or sound effects from online free libraries what's something a message or tip you can give to help them achieve the most with the most little <laughs> mm. nice. Ooh, this is a great question like i think we can resource this back to like the reason why i founded like my uh, medibeats and probably gammy as well but uh, on my end i would say collaboration is key mm -hmm. some of the best projects that i have ever done no no joke they started from no budget or very very low budget and what happened was they pitched the idea and after they pitched the idea the idea and they had a demo everything they started to get grants and everything and everything just like was 10 out of 10 but of course like you know we had to find resources to get them the free music stuff so when i was younger i wouldn't say i'm very old right now but like when i was yeah. younger <laughs> Uh, well, I mean, you can ask me anything except my age. But anyway, <laughs> no, <come on>. right? <laughs> so um, here's the here's the idea: if you can find a bunch of people who are passionate, let's say you're finding someone, you find someone who's passionate to work with you through the ups and downs. Money is secondary. Creating the object or the product is primary. And if let's say if you're in-house and you really don't want to find someone and you're maybe a solo producer, then I would say like Darshan has like some int very interesting resources. I think you can like pick his brain off. There are a few uh, free resources online and you can like you can use the sounds as well. Uh, uh, I think as long as you don't like straight up like copy paste them, uh, then it should be all right. Stuff like Humble Bundle. There's, I think the GDC vault, like uh, Sony, like each each year they'll give they'll like um give out like a free like compilation of um sound effects, and the BBC also has like a free um online library also that you can uh you can use also. There's a lot of sounds that you can get, but I want I do I also would want to um 
link back to what Elmer said about collaboration and like to perhaps like reach out to um, uh, sound designers so because it is great if you want to do things by yourself that's that's fine uh, it would be better if you you also have someone who is a bit more experienced in that field as well because then they'll also be able to like help you um, tweak the sounds polish the sounds and make them fit into your game as well in extension to that equipment or um, software. So Elmer did list out a few good ones. I personally am using Reaper. It's honestly not too hard. You know, it's not too hard to use. It's, 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 a, it's a new software, so it's just something that you need to get used to. As for like physical equipment or so, like, like I mentioned earlier, um, using your phone is already like a great way to start like recording like voices and stuff like that. But I, I will say like it does, if you have the budget, and and resources it does help if you do have like a quality or like a bit more of a quality thing so i myself have like a nice a nice set of headphones yeah actually like for sound design you you just need like a good pair of headphones like that's that's like a, a great place to, to start for my mic uh in comparison like this is like the mic on my laptop and and this is the mic that i'm using um which doubles as a recorder so so you can you will notice that there is a difference but it is both also doable you know sometimes re in regards to collaboration it's just better to get somebody who you know can take the worry away from you so you can really focus on creating a great game unless you're a solo developer then like i've met some really great solo developers one of them from gammy like shout out to you hafiz yep and they create like some amazing music and some amazing uh some amazing designs but like you know the time it took to create something like that well it it's better to just collaborate with somebody who can take your mind off things you know what i mean right you, i think just to summarize game audio should not be an afterthought like we mentioned earlier throughout the entire game development th uh, process it's something to consider it's something to flesh out and pro have that process with Mm -hmm. That that would be the moral of the, the story. <laughs> Start thinking it early. Mm -hmm. Thank you to the two of you for your time. And A thank pleasure, you so man. much. Yeah, thank you so much. Yeah. For... Thank you, Johnson. Yeah, thanks for making this happen. My pleasure. But otherwise, though, um, for people who like to contact either of you, how could they reach out? For myself, it's simple. You just look for it. Elmer, let me just like uh, very quickly just Google, uh, just put it in the Discord channel. You can look for me on social media with this. You know, um, I I usually re I, I usually reply in ten hours or something. Uh, but, as yeah. uh, as for me, uh, I'm I, I myself am trying to cut down on uh, social media usage, but I do have a Twitter handle that uh, I think I can share later. If not, uh, you can also just reach out to me on Discord. I'll reply um, as as soon as I'm free, lah. And once again. Thank you guys again, and see you all next time. Bye. Thanks, everyone. Bye. Thanks for coming.